Hello everyone, this is Bunny Joker. First of all, thank you very much for being a part of the closed tests with Slope. On this video, I will show you how you can create maps for Slope and how to test them. This is something I really want to test with you since having the community creating maps for Slope is a big part of the game's design. As it is in games like Trackmania Nations and Pavlov, having the community creating maps is one of the best ways to keep the game's content fresh and new. So I really need your help testing this process. The first thing you will have to do is download the app Gravity Sketch, which is available for free on the Oculus Store. I will show you the process, it's very easy, you don't even have to remove the headset between creating the map, then changing to slope and testing it. So I'm entering now the Gravity Sketch app. Here on the Gravity Sketch menu, some things might be different for you since I already have some work done and I'm already logged into an account. There is a chance you will have to create an account here, which I strongly suggest you do so you can save your work on the cloud as well. Then you just have to click in New Sketch. Now I have a setup which makes the use of Gravity Sketch easier to create maps for Slope. On the left controller, if you press the Y button, which is the blue button, you will open the Gravity Sketch menu. Then on the Settings tab, you will be able to change some things. First of all, the vertical lock. With it activated, you will guarantee that you will rotate the scene, always keeping the vertical axis pointing up. If this is not activated, you will be able to rotate the scene on all axes. Keep it on, since when creating a map for a slope, it's always good to have a notion of where up is and therefore how steep is the slope you're creating. If you're not seeing those lines over there, you can also activate them on the settings. They are called World Axis and you can choose between leaving them visible or not. I find it extremely important to make it always visible since it will give you notions of where the zero point is, how far down you're building your map and it also helps with notions of steepness. You can experiment with those settings but for now I'll just show you how the rest of my setup looks like. Okay, now let's go for some basics of Gravity Sketch. When you use the grip button on the left controller, you can grab the world and drag it around. It's not the same thing as grabbing an object and dragging it around. In this case, you're dragging the whole scene. You can understand that by doing this, you're moving yourself around to see the world from different perspectives. If you're already holding the left grip button and then you also hold the right grip button, then you can zoom in and out of the scene. This way you can practically put yourself in the middle of the map you're creating. To reduce the scale, just hold both grips and move both controllers close to each other so you can zoom out. Now, if you want to actually grab an object, you will use this transparent sphere as a grabbing volume not the other sphere on the tip of the controller since that one is actually the brush you use to create something with the selected tool when pressing the trigger button. But the transparent sphere you can see close to the grip button, when it's intersecting with any object in the scene, you can press this grip button to grab and drag the object around. This way you can grab anything and change its position in the scene. You can change the size of anything you're grabbing by doing the same zoom motion, but this time using first the right grip to grab the object and then also holding the left grip button to make it bigger or smaller. If I grab an object and while holding it I press the B button, which is this red button on the right controller, the object will be deleted. There is also the A button on the right controller that can be used to change the color of the object you're holding. If you push the color palette down, you get darker colors. If you bring it back up, lighter colors. You can also grab the pure version of any given color by selecting one of those options on the edge of the palette. So I selected pure yellow for that object and it also selected yellow for any new form I will create from now on. The right thumbstick can be used to increase or decrease the size of the grabbing sphere. With a small size, you can be specific of what you want to grab. With a big size, you can grab several objects at the same time. You can grab multiple objects and press red button to delete them all at once. I'm using this to clear the scene now. 
I will now start creating a map for slope and show you this process and how simple it is. First thing I'm going to do is press X on the left hand, which is this purple button. When I click it, it will show all different creation tools you can use. The one I consider most useful for creating maps for slope is the surface tool. You can use it especially for creating the slope. With surface selected, I can close this menu if I want. So how does this tool work? When I press any of the trigger buttons, it will show a curve between both controllers. You can see that depending on how I rotate both controllers, it bends this curve. As soon as I press the trigger on the other hand, I start drawing a surface. I can make it thinner when I bring them together or wider when I move them apart. I can put them up or down, tilt them and more. So very quickly, I've created something that can be used as a slope. Let's create another one. So I'm grabbing it with the right grip button, pressing the red button to delete. Now, the game will recognize different materials based on the color you use for each object in the scene. For snow, I have to use white. So now I will create the map I want to actually test inside the game. I will start by making a flat surface, going down a little bit. Now I will make it a little bit wider. Then a small bump here. Descend a little bit more and stop here. It could be better, but let's just consider this is the map I want to test. Once you have it created, you can adjust its rotation. Let's say you want it a little bit steeper. You can use the blue axis to help understand how steep your slope is. One thing to consider is that when you look at this axis from up close, you will be able to see that one of its sides is thicker than the other. The thick side is the positive side for this axis. Try always to create your map towards the thick side. This way you will guarantee that the player will start the map facing forward. So before I show you how you can edit this curve you created to adjust things, let's just go ahead and test this map. There's only two more simple things to do if you want to finalize a map which you can test. One of them is creating a blue cube, which will be the start point for the player. So I will open the tools menu again, pressing X on the left controller. I will select this tool used to create primitive objects. Pressing it twice will open a sub menu with options for me to select. You can do this for any tool. For instance, you can make the surface tool have a much stronger curve by changing its options. But going back to the primitives, now I will just select the cube, close this menu using the X button. Now just by pressing the right trigger, you can use both controllers to choose the size of the cube you're creating. Choose it wisely because the size of the cube will define the size of the player compared to the rest of the map. I just created it and it's still a little big, so I will grab it with the right controller, then while holding it, grab with the left controller and make it smaller. Then I will grab it again, press A and select the pure blue color for it. With this, I just created the spawn point for players that will play this map. This doesn't have anything to do with where the zero point is. I can choose any place for this cube and that's where the player will spawn. The last thing you have to do is create the ending point of the map. Since it's represented by a black cube, I will just clone this cube I've just created. To do this, you just have to grab it with the right grip and while holding the object, you press the right trigger. Don't worry, after releasing, the first object will go back to the position it was before. I will now grab this cube and select the black color for it. Since it represents the ending point, I will put it here. So we've just created a map, but it doesn't have any details. Let me just add something else then. If I clone a cube and paint it green, it will be transformed into trees when you're in game. I will make them different sizes so you can see the difference. So we have a map. Now for you to play it on slope, it's very easy. You will press the menu button on the left controller, which is the blue one. You will select save and export.
Now use the quest menu to exit Gravity Sketch. Without taking off your headset or anything, we will enter a slope. Now inside slope, I will open the games menu. And now here on levels, the maps you exported on Gravity Sketch will be listed. If you can't see it, use the left th thumbstick to navigate right or left inside the levels section. I'm seeing tutorial 1 here, I will press import. It's imported now. If your map is a little complex, there can be a greater time for this process to happen. After import is done, I will press load with the right trigger. And now I'm here inside the map we've just created. Now I will walk to the edge using the walking mode. I release the walking button and here I am riding on the map I created. Getting to the end, it teleports me back to the beginning. You can see that when this happens, the mood and sun position changes. So this is the process of quickly creating the map. You can see those trees came out kind of small. On the next video, I will show you how you can edit objects to change their shape. I will also show you how to create other kinds of objects like rails, rocks, ice and much more. This is the process I use to create all maps you can see already available. Thank you very much for joining me on this tutorial and I hope you can create your maps already. And after you do this, submit them because I want to play on them. <laughs> this is you helping us create content for the game. It's very important. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.